very good day to you and welcome to this week's edition of our weekly news roundup on Africa Today News New York. My name is Favor Aham and these are the stories and main talking points for us in the week that just ended. Amanda will brought to you the report that Burkina Faso's army came out to announce that operations by the French army in the jihadist heat West African state were officially over. Senior officers from the West African country and France's forces in the country held a flag-lowering ceremony to mark the official end of French operations at a camp on the outskirts of the capital, Ouagadougou. On the same day, we reported that the River State Chapter of the Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC, came out to declare that power should be moved to the southern part of Nigeria in the interest of equity, peace, and justice. On Tuesday, we informed you that no fewer than 51 soldiers were confirmed dead following an ambush by suspected jihadists in northern Burkina Faso. According to the army, about 160 of the assailants died during counterattacks. On the same day, we reported that the President of the United States, Joe Biden, asserted that Ukraine would never be a victory for Russia as he delivered a speech in Poland ahead of the first anniversary of Moscow's invasion. On Wednesday, we brought you the report that a former national chairman of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, Adam Sushomale, openly faulted President Mohamed Buhari's decision on the Naira redesign policy, saying that the president is on his own. On the same day, we reported that Governor Samuel Autumn of Benue State came out to assert that he was fully ready to sacrifice his senatorial ambition in the National Assembly elections if it will ensure the victory of the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi. Still on Wednesday, we brought you the report that the police in Tunisia confirmed the arrest of Chaima Issa, a prominent opponent to President K. Said and a senior official in the National Salvation Front for criticizing the leader. The country is now notorious for arresting all perceived enemies of the country's leader. that the National Christian Elders Forum, led by former Defense Minister General Theophilus Danjuma, retired, and other elder statesmen came out to openly throw their weight of support behind the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, ahead of Sunday's elections. We also reported that the 14th Emir of Kanu and former Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, al Haji Mohamed Sunusi, openly lashed out at politicians in Nigeria, leading with Nigerians to support the cashless policy of the Apex Bank. On Friday, we brought you the report that R&B singer R. Kelly was handed a 20-year prison term for child pornography and other charges by a U.S. judge, although he is expected to serve most of it simultaneously with a previous sentence. On the same day, we reported that the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, opened up on how he blocked his former boss, former president, Olusha Gwambasanjo, from actualizing his third-term bid when they both held sway in Aso Rock. We also reported that the White House disclosed that the United States has concluded plans to announce sweeping new economic sanctions against Russia and more support for Ukraine, 
a year after President Vladimir Putin ordered the ongoing invasion of Ukraine. Finally, on Saturday, we reported that River State Governor Nyesom Wike had, for the opt-in's time, reiterated that he has no intention or plan to the camp to the All Progressive Congress APC before the 2023 elections. This is despite his stance on zoning the presidency to the South, describing the insinuations that he is dumping the People's Democratic Party PDP for the APC as speculative. Lastly, we informed you that a U.S. man convicted of a 1990 stabbing murder was finally executed in Florida. Authorities pointed out the first capital sentence carried out in the southeastern state in more than three years. Now, that's been it for our weekly news roundup on Africa Today News New York. My name is Faber Aham. Thank you for watching.